Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're checking out the 2015 Mitsubishi Evolution MR. And this is somewhat bittersweet as this is of course the last of the Evos, with 2015 being the final model year. Now it's important to keep in mind that the Evo 10 has been on sale in the US since 2008, so it's definitely starting to show its age. There's no USB input, the infotainment system is very challenging to read if the headlights are on during the day, for example when it's raining, and the interior is similar to economy cars with nearly everything plastic, and the two nice surfaces seem to be where you rest your elbows. Not to mention, a trunk that shares the same cargo volume as the Subaru BRZ. It's tiny. But of course you're not buying an Evo for a beautiful interior, you're buying it for what you don't see. Under the hood is a 2 liter inline 4 cylinder aluminum block and head turbocharged with dual overhead cam and variable valve timing on both the intake and the exhaust engine, producing 291 horsepower at 6500 rpm and 300 pound feet of torque at 4000 rpm. All of this power is sent through a 6-speed dual-clutch transmission, which you can control manually with paddle shifters, or you can let the car have all the fun and vary the shift points based on which mode you're in, normal, sport, or super sport. So let's see how it drives. And on this, you don't have a push-button start and you don't use the key to start it. Instead, you have a plastic knob that you can push in and turn, much like a key, uh, but without using the key. The key can just sit in your pocket, so it's kind of a combination of a push-button start and a key. Not sure what the method or idea behind that is, but anyways, uh, you know, it starts it up regardless. So let's take it for a quick test drive and talk about, you know, some of the features on here. So one of the cool things about the Mitsubishi Evolution is, of course, its all-wheel drive system. And so how this works is you've got the engine, and the engine's going to send that power to a center differential. And this is an active center differential, which can vary the torque from the front to the rear. So, you know, usually it's probably going to be sending about 80% up to the front when you don't need power to the rear. And when needed, it can send about 50 to 60% of that torque to the rear. So the power is split in the center through an active rear differential. The torque going up to the front passes through a helical limited slip differential. This is a purely mechanical limited slip differential. There's no maintenance required. Required. It's not electronic, it's always working. And then the power that's sent to the rear wheels is sent through what Mitsubishi calls active yaw control. And this is a torque vectoring differential. And so what it does is it sends torque to the outside wheel in a corner, for example, if you're accelerating out. So it sends torque where it's needed and it helps control yaw. So it helps control the rotation of the car about a corner. And so what happens is, as that torque is sent to the rear, you can vary the amount of torque to either side, and so instead of using brakes like some cars will use to call it torque vectoring, uh, what they do is they actually reroute the torque, so it's going to one side, there's planetary gears in there, and these planetary gears are essentially like second differentials, and so they'll send that torque to either wheel, and you can lock up a clutch pack in there, which redirects the torque through this planetary gear set to the other wheel that needs the torque. So in that corner, when you're going on the outside, uh, that outside wheel will accelerate more than the inside wheel, it'll have more torque, and so it'll help control the rotation of the car uh, and help you go around that corner faster. Now, as far as the driving position in here, these seats are a little wide uh, and they don't have quite the bolstering uh, that they could. And you know, it's kind of unfortunate because Mitsubishi used to have Recaros, but they've gotten rid of that for the 2015 model year. So you're no longer going to have those. Uh, and instead, you just have these uh, seats here. This is the leather option, so they are a little nicer than the base seats. But regardless, uh, you're not going to have those Recaros, which are really snug. The other thing is with this steering wheel, uh, it is leather wrapped. You know, it doesn't feel all that phenomenal but the steering wheel can only move up and down. It doesn't telescope. And so for me, you know, when I switch my foot from the accelerator to the brakes, I'm always hitting the steering wheel because I can't pull it back. And I'd also like to be able to pull the wheel a little bit closer to me just for more aggressive driving, have the wheel a little bit closer and be in more control. Now, as far as the transmission, as I mentioned, there's those various modes which you can put it in. So normal, uh, sport, and super sport. And as you vary them, it just changes the shift points and also how quickly the transmission shift gears. So in normal mode it's going to be a little bit smoother of a shift but that said it really isn't that smooth of a shift so when you go from you know let's say uh, first to second or second to third you kind of get a little bit of a forward jolt uh, as it's changing gear so you kind of get set back in your seat a little bit it's not all that smooth and it just kind of gets worse as far as how smooth it is as you go into sport or super sport as it gets more aggressive and does it quicker. Now that said, once you put it in super sport, it does actually shift pretty quick. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and put it into sport mode. And here, you know, you can start to use the paddle shifters. You can put it over into that manual mode. And it seems to work decently quick, the dual clutch transmission. Uh, you know, as you shift gears, 
honestly pretty quick. The only thing is it's not necessarily that smooth, but overall it does work pretty well. Now as far as the steering itself, you have a pretty short ratio steering, so as you turn in, you know, the vehicle turns very quickly, and it does seem to be pretty responsive, uh, and overall it does seem to be pretty good. I guess my only gripe with it is just I wish I could telescope, have it in a little bit more, uh, and things like that, just so the driving position was a little bit better. Now there's also three different modes that you can put the all-wheel drive system in. So you can have it in tarmac, you can put it in gravel, or you can put it in snow. And what this is doing is altering uh, that active, you know, center differential. It's altering the torque vectoring that's happening at the rear. It's altering the systems, you know, as far as stability, so it allows for less wheel slip, things like that. Uh, and so there's different variations which will happen, but for example, if you're on gravel, then you know, you're know you probably going to have larger steering angles because the tires are going to have more slip. And so the system realizes this and it doesn't interfere as much versus if you were on tarmac and you have a really large steering angle, you know it might think, okay, you're losing control. So it'll try to manipulate the all-wheel drive system, uh, where the torque split's going, and that rear torque vectoring differential in order to help regain control. So how about the throttle? What happens when you put your foot down? Well, you do get a slight delay. Uh, as far as turbo lag and it's not immediately responsive in order to get you into the power uh, but once you do get in it you do have a serious amount of torque and it really pulls and you do notice the torque tapering off towards the top end if you keep your foot down and you keep it up in those high revs uh, so right around the 4,000 to 5,000 range seems to be the sweet spot where you get a really good pull that dual clutch transmission shifting very quickly as I downshift here hard on the brakes you know the logic is there it knows when to downshift when to pre-select the next gear uh, which gear to pre-select as far as the ride itself, you do feel quite a bit of the bumps. You know, it is a fairly stiff setup. Uh, but you know, that said, I also seem to get a large amount of body roll if I am turning in really hard. So I'm kind of a little bit confused by that. I uh, wasn't quite expecting it. You definitely get a lot of feedback uh, through the steering as far as what the road feels like. You feel all the little bumps and things like that. Um, but that said, you still do have, you know, some decent body roll as you go into a corner. So, you know, I'm not necessarily saying it's bad. It doesn't feel bad and it seems to grip really well when you are in a corner. Um, just, you know, kind of observations about how it does feel. So if you put it in super sport mode and you put the transmission in drive so it does all the shifting for you, essentially what it does is it just keeps it in as high of a gear as possible. So you'll hear those revs screaming uh, and then as you come into the brakes, you know, once it can downshift, it does it. So it keeps the revs almost always above 4,000 RPM, you know, unless you're in first gear and you're traveling really slow. So you always have power available and it only shifts once you get up to 7,000 RPM, and then the second it can downshift, it does it. <laughs> it's a pretty unbelievable mode, and the shifts are very fast once you are in that mode. Now, Mitsubishi, of course, recommends this for the track, because obviously you're not gonna be driving around town with it spinning at 5,000 RPM. So coming hard into a corner here, you can hear it downshift down into first gear, into second, into third, as you pull out of the corner. Very abrupt, you know, when you let off the gas, you feel the engine braking immediately. It kind of slams you forward. Uh, it's a very aggressive setting for sure, um, but very fun to drive without a doubt. Okay, so let's get a quick zero to 60 run in. In order to do launch control, and you can hear that it's obviously in super sport mode, because of how high the revs are. In order to do launch control, you put it in super sport and you turn off the traction control. And so once you do that, you put your foot on the brake, foot on the gas, it revs up to about 5,000 RPM, let your foot off the brake and go. So that is exactly what we will do. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So driving on the highway, doing about 65, you do get a decent amount of road noise and wind noise. Looking around 80, 81 decibels, very similar to the Subaru STI, which I tested. Uh, and as far as fuel economy in this car, uh, it's pretty terrible. 17 in the city, 22 on the highway with the dual clutch transmission. Uh, in my own test, I did 25 miles per gallon on my fuel economy course, which is primarily highway. Uh, I never exceed 65 miles per hour, so it's kind of a best case scenario. So the fuel economy isn't that great of a story. 
Now, you know, fuel economy may not matter to you, uh, fine, I get it, uh, but range in this vehicle is pretty poor, and so if you, you know, you fill up your tank, it's 14.5 gallons, and it's rated 22 miles per gallon, and so your range is a little over 300 miles on the highway. When you turn this vehicle on, and you have a full tank of gas, it tells you that you have like 210 miles. I guess that's like the combined rating that it assumes you'll have. Uh, so just a little over 200 miles of range in this. So you're going to be visiting the fuel uh, pump very often, uh, which I don't really like. You know, I'd like if it had a little bit larger tank or if it was more fuel efficient uh, so that you didn't have to fill up quite as often. You know, the STI had the shortest range of any of the vehicles I've tested uh, until this, and then this, you know, has like 50 miles less range uh, than the STI. So, you know, that's what it is. Uh, fuel economy, not a great story, and you are going to be visiting the pump often if you do have this vehicle. Now, the interior overall, I mean, it's there are some rattles in here. This car does have 11,000 miles on it. A lot of journalists have been through this already. So, you know, at this point, uh, it's been beaten up. Um, but, uh, you know, you are going to have some rattles in this. This interior isn't the finest quality of things uh, as far as $40,000 cars go. But, you know, it's a blast to drive. This thing is immensely fun. You find a mountain road like this, uh, you know, put it in super sport mode or put it over into the manual shift mode uh, and just, you know, tearing up these corners is a blast to do. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below.